In this video, we are going to explain why safe substances like alcohol are legal and dangerous substances like psilocybin mushrooms are illegal. For a drug to be classified as Schedule 1, which is what magic mushrooms are in most countries, they have to obtain absolutely no therapeutic or medicinal value. Alcohol and psilocybin mushrooms are both psychoactive drugs. A psychoactive drug is any chemical substance that changes brain function and results in alteration in perception, mood, or consciousness. Wikipedia. Both occur naturally, although alcohol requires the process of fermentation. So, they both occur in nature. Why is one illegal and the other not? For this to make any sense, shrooms absolutely must have more negative effects than alcohol. I am going to proceed by reading you the effects. Potential negative short-term effects of alcohol. Diarrhea, nausea, unconsciousness, vomiting, vomiting while unconscious can kill. Emotional volatility, dizziness, erectile dysfunction, increased difficulty achieving orgasm in some females. Frequent urination, confusion, headaches, breathing difficulties, impaired judgment, decreased perception and coordination. Anemia, coma and death, blackouts, hangover lasting 12 to 36 hours, fetal damage in pregnant women. Potential negative short-term effects of shrooms. Intense feelings of fear, mild to severe anxiety, headache, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, confusion, fainting, memory disruption. Let's look at the long-term effects. Potential long-term effects of alcohol. Nerve damage, erectile dysfunction, permanent brain damage, ulcers, gastritis, malnutrition, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmia, stroke, severe addiction, high blood pressure, liver disease, steatosis of the liver, hepatitis, fibrosis, cirrhosis, pancreatitis, mouth cancer, esophagus cancer, throat cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, that's a lot of cancer. Let's look at the negative long-term effects of shrooms. May precipitate or exasperate latent or existing mental disorders. HPPD, potential unwanted spiritual awakenings. So basically, if I have a mental disorder, it can make it worse. Or if I'm predisposed to get a mental disorder at some time in life, it can make that come on sooner. But they won't create mental disorders out of nowhere. HPPD basically means that you might see some trails behind objects for a while after taking it, or you could see like a static in the air when you're looking at things, kind of like there's a grainy texture to everything you're looking at. But this isn't permanent, and to be honest, it really doesn't sound that bad. Oh, and you know, spiritual awakenings. We should all avoid those at all costs, right? Well, that was a bust. Alcohol seems like it has a longer list of negative effects, both in the short term and in the long term. Maybe shrooms are illegal because um, it's easier to die from them? Maybe a lot of people overdose when taking them? Let's take a look at the LD50 of both substances. The LD50 for alcohol happens when blood alcohol concentration level hits 0.45%. This happens at about 13 shots if a 40% alcoholic spirit is drank. So basically what that means is you would have to consume 13 45 milliliter shots all in one go to reach the LD50, where you have a 50% chance of dying. On average, six people die every day in the US alone from alcohol poisoning. What's even more scary is alcohol kills 2.5 million people worldwide each year. That's not including the millions more it injures. It's pretty much a global problem. The LD50 for mushrooms has never been reached. This means no one has ever died directly as a result of eating psilocybin mushrooms. No one has ever overdosed. The LD50 for rats is 280 milligrams of psilocybin per kilo. So let's assume that the LD50 is the same for humans, and we'll take a 60 kilogram human and see how much he would have to consume to overdose. Given these numbers, a 60 kilogram human would have to consume 1,680 grams of dried psilocybin mushrooms to overdose. This is assuming that each gram of mushroom contains 1% psilocybin, which is the average range for dried mushrooms. Uh, basically, this is enough mushrooms to cause 650 people to have a regular mushroom trip. So, I'm still confused. Alcohol seems ridiculously more dangerous than shrooms. How come one is illegal and the other isn't? Maybe alcohol has more long-lasting positive effects. That's gotta be it. Let's take a look at the positive effects of both substances. Short-term positive effects of alcohol. Relaxation, mood lift, increased sociability, lowered inhibitions, reduced social anxiety, kills pain, beer goggles, others appear more attractive. That should probably be in the negatives. Short-term positive effects of mushrooms. Mood lift, euphoria, increased giggling and laughing, creative, philosophical, or deep thinking. Boring tasks can become more interesting or funny. Sensation of insight. Life-changing spiritual experiences. Intense feelings of wonder. Paradoxical feeling of normalcy and deep alteration of psyche. May interrupt cluster headaches. Increased detection of motion and peripheral vision. Open and closed-eyed visuals. Memories come to light. Whoa. Alright, let's take a look at the long-term positive effects. Long-term positive effects of alcohol. Reduction in isochemic stroke. A reduction in coronary heart disease. Um, that's actually debatable. Even if it's true, I can think of many 
more healthy routes to reduce your chances of getting a stroke or heart disease. Also keep in mind these positive effects are for people who consume alcohol moderately, not the overindulgence our society is known for. Long-term positive effects of mushrooms. Reduced anxiety, more positive outlook on life, reduced fear around death, ability to eliminate addiction. In a recent study by the John Hopkins School of Medicine, psilocybin was given to 18 healthy adults. 14 months after completing the study, 94% who received psilocybin said it was one of the top five most meaningful experiences of their life. A further 39% said that it was the single most meaningful experience in their life. In another study involving near-death patients who were administered psilocybin, it was found to greatly reduce their anxiety around death. It's kind of like it made them feel okay with dying. Maybe they realized there wasn't that much to be afraid of after all. In another study to help heavy smokers quit, they administered three sessions to 15 volunteers. 12 of the 15 smokers managed to quit smoking for six months after their psilocybin sessions. This demonstrated a success rate of 80%. Okay, so let me get this straight. Mushrooms are a Schedule 1 substance in America and many other countries, which means this. Schedule 1 drugs, substances, or chemicals are defined as drugs with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Schedule 1 drugs are the most dangerous drugs of all the drug schedules, with potentially severe psychological or physical dependence. In what way does that describe psilocybin mushrooms? They have no dependency issues, they're non-addictive, Actually, you build an immediate tolerance to them, so if you were to consume them every day, um, eventually they would virtually have no effect on you. Also, I believe curing addiction falls under the category of medical use. What medical use does alcohol have? It's a mild painkiller. Um, there's far better painkillers out there than alcohol. So clearly none of this makes sense. If alcohol is legal, then every drug that is just as harmful as alcohol should also be legal, especially drugs that are less harmful than alcohol. I mean. That's just common sense, right? Unfortunately, our society doesn't run on common sense. Here's what Terence McKenna had to say about the legalization of psychedelics. Psychedelics are illegal not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. He may just be right, because none of this makes any goddamn fucking sense to me. Thanks for watching guys, that concludes this video. I just wanted to tell you that I've recently joined this website called Patreon. Um, you may have heard of it, you may have not. Basically it allows you to go on there and donate the equivalent of buying me like a cup of coffee per month, so like two dollars. I don't expect anyone to donate, I'm not one to really want to reach out and ask for donations, um, because these videos will always be free, I would never charge anything for them, and I do this because I'm very passionate about what I'm talking about, and this is really fun for me and enjoyable. So yeah, donating will just help me help the frequency of uploads improve and the quality of video, because I'm using like a Sony $100 camera right now, and yeah, I would love to get some sweet lighting in here just to make the quality, you know, better. And I would, I would love to do this full time. In the meantime, I really appreciate all the positive comments lately. They really mean a lot to me. Oh, it's here. And um, yeah, 